Good evening. How's everyone doing today? Welcome. It's always a pleasure to welcome you all to this event. Um, you see, if we were to describe what we do at the Bauer College in one word, it would be Houston. If Houston has a problem, if Houston has an issue, then Bauer has a solution. And to that end, what we try to do is to groom talent so that industry in Houston, the CEOs in Houston, when they want to hire talent, the first place they come to is Bauer. Okay, so that's the goal here. So, but we can't do that just using the academic uh, uh, structure we have. Because we serve industry, we need input from industry all the time, all the time. We need to know what we're doing well, what we're not doing well, what's happening out there, what's not happening out there. So we need those connections with industry. And I think that's really what uh, symposia, speaker sessions like this, that's really what it's all about, is to connect you with industry so that not only do you understand where the leaders are coming from, but also to make sure that our curriculum is both rigorous as well as relevant to the changing needs of industry. So I'm really delighted to have the speaker who we have today, who is the uh, CEO of Direct Energy, Badr Khan, who is going to talk to us about innovations in energy. And it's, it's wonderful that we are able to bring in speakers of his caliber here to talk to you all. Now, in order for this to happen, we need the college, we need faculty, we need you students here, but we also need sponsors. And for that, I also want to recognize our good friends from AGL Resources. Bernie is going to introduce our speaker, but they have been doing this with us for a long, long time. And if it weren't for their support and their sponsorship of events like this, we would not be able to host this. So thank you all, AGL Resources. Thank you for what you do. With that, I know some of you are here uh, is anyone here doing things for Bauer Pride Day? Any of you working on that? Oh, there. Okay, good, good. We just, I just want to make sure that all our students are participating. So anyway, once again, I want to welcome you all, and I know you're going to be in for a great session here. With that, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Bernie, who's going to introduce our speaker. Bernie Osuan from AGL Resources. Well, thank you, Dean Ronchad. And again, it's our pleasure to really facilitate and sponsor this kind of venue. I mean, as you said, it's exciting for us to engage you, mostly students here, and what we're doing in the industry. We've been doing this a while, and uh, I know AGL has been very proud to sponsor this. We have alumni here, and that work for us, and so we're, uh, we're very pleased to continue our relationship with you at uh, University of Houston. So. I know you're not up here to hear me talk. Uh, Mr. Khan uh, from Direct Energy, I know brings a broad experience that he's, he's had in not only Direct Energy, I know he's worked in different parts of uh, his parent company in, in London Centrica. So I'm sure he'll use all that experience to share with you, talk about the innovation. So with that, I'm gonna introduce Mr. Khan. Thank you. Thanks all. Here, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. I, I think I, I brought the right color tie as well for the presentation today. Um, I am going to talk about about innovation in uh, in my space of the energy world, uh, retail energy. But before I do, I thought you would um, might be interested in just a bit of, a bit about me and my company. Uh, so. I'll uh, share a bit about me first, uh, and this is just a bit of color that you might not uh, have seen from the uh, whatever profile was put out when uh, we announced the series. So on the left, you might recognize that's U2, uh, for those of you that don't know. Um, two reasons for that. I am, I do enjoy music, but that's not the reason for it. One is because like, uh, like U2, I grew up in Ireland in Northern Ireland, in Belfast, uh, and, um, you know, very, very proud of, of that. Um, I don't particularly sound Irish anymore, and I know I don't look Irish uh, particularly either, but it is, it is my hometown. 
Second reason uh, is because like you 2 I too was in a band when I was in uh, high school. Um, we rehearsed two songs, um, Jumping Jack Flash uh, by the Rolling Stones, and I've forgotten the other song. When it was time for us to perform, uh, we were the supporting act for another band who were considerably better than us. And uh, after we finished our second song, we didn't get to play our first song. We didn't get to play the second song. So that ended my uh, career in music. But I share that story because as important it is for, for, for all of us to know um, as early as possible what we're good at, it's also helpful to know what we're not good at. And I was definitely not good, destined to be a musician. Um, I've traveled a lot around the world. Um, I used to go backpacking uh, when I, 20, 25 years ago. Uh, and I still travel today, actually, uh, both personally and love traveling. And uh, professionally uh, as well, since I left Belfast 25 years ago, I've moved no fewer than 15 times. Uh, and I've lived in eight different cities uh, in the US and in Europe. And I share that because um, I think the world is getting smaller. You know, we're in a very, we're in a, people talk about the world being, you know, it's a global community that's getting smaller, and it really is. And expectations certainly in, you know, in larger companies and smaller companies are that people are able to understand uh, different parts of the world and are mobile. So global and mobile, and certainly that was the case uh, for me. Um, the bottom picture on the right is Houston, for those of you who don't recognize it. Um, I've been in Houston, we've been in Houston for five years now, which is actually the longest amount of time I've lived uh, anywhere in the last 25 years, but it is our home today. And, um, you know, my wife and I are really committed to everywhere we've been, but also here in Houston where, um, you know, we're involved in the community, whether it's our kids' school, uh, or whether it's other organizations or causes that are important to us. And I share that because you know, leadership isn't, about, isn't just about what you're doing at work. Uh, it is as important to be a leader uh, in your communities. And I, have, I, I, I believe that very strongly to encourage all the people that, uh, at Direct Energy uh, in a leadership role to be active in their communities. And I think that's something that uh, good leaders uh, want to do and strive for. Um, on the bottom left is a picture of a jag. It's a leaping cat. Uh, I've been with Direct Energy for 11 years uh, and in the retail energy industry for almost 20 years. But my first job was with Jaguar cars in England. Uh, I loved it. I used to test drive them when I was sort of in my early 20s, which was the best gig you could ever get. I don't know what I can test drive in my current job. Um, and um, there is no other point to that story. They make great cars, so there you go. And in the middle is probably the most important part uh, of, of me, which is my family. I've got two girls, um, a nine-year-old and a six-year-old. And I've got uh, my wife and I have a third one on the way, so we're very excited about that. Um, and I do everything I can to spend as much time as I can, as I can with the kids and my wife. We have date night on Friday nights uh, with my wife, not the kids. And I spend as much time as I can with the kids at the weekends in blogs that um, uh, I write or someone writes sometimes for me. Uh, in my company, we talk about, I talk about the kids and relate that to work. And people always say to me, that's the stuff that everyone reads. No one reads anything else, so, uh, so there you go. Um, I share that because, uh, you know, I think that it, um, it's very easy to get wrapped up in school, for some of you, or at work. And the more senior you get, the easier it is to get disconnected from home. Uh, and disconnected from what I think is actually the most important thing, which is family. Family and friends. Um, so I... That's why I share that story. So that's a bit about me. Um, my company, very briefly, um, Direct Energy, is North America's largest uh, retail energy and energy services company uh, in North America. 
We serve millions of homes and businesses for electricity and natural gas. And we've also got the largest um, home services workforce in the country where we've got technicians going into people's homes, fixing air conditioning, fixing, repairing, replacing air conditioning, heating, uh, water heaters, boilers, uh, plumbing, and electrical needs. We are a wholly owned subsidiary of Centrica, uh, which is a UK-based company based in London. Um, it's one of the 20 largest companies on the London Stock Exchange. And we're involved in, in every aspect of the energy value chain. Direct here in North America has been around for about 15 years from uh, a business that had no customers, uh, no employees, no revenues, to 11 uh, billion last year, and this year will be closer to $20 billion on the back of some acquisitions we completed in 2013. We've got 6,000 people, including 1,000 here in Houston, uh, which is our headquarters, uh, and we serve over 6 million customers, including about eight or 900,000 customers here in Texas. And we're uh, the, you know, the largest uh, in our space. So that's direct energy, and that's a bit about me. Um, I am going to talk about um, innovation, but just some perspective. I think the, our industry, the energy industry that I'm in, is just tremendously exciting. Uh, it's hugely strategic. It's vital. It plays a vital role around the world. And uh, pretty much any con every country in the world, for every country in the world, energy is number one, number two, or number three on the uh, national agenda. But beyond debating uh, energy domestically or uh, geopolitics internationally, the vast majority of us actually don't engage with our own energy consumption at a personal level. Unless there's a blackout or there's a hurricane coming and where we engage, uh, really we're scrambling around to determine when or whether power is going to go off or when it's going to go back on again. As an industry, we've frankly not done a very good job of helping our customers to engage in energy at a personal level. And I believe that needs to change, and I think it is beginning to change. Let me ask you, quick uh, audience participation, how many of you uh, know how much you're paying on a monthly basis for your electric or gas bill. Yeah, it's about half the room, which is, that's pretty typical. I don't know what the rest of the other half of you are doing, but that's pretty typical. Um, you're asleep in the job. It's a big bill. Most people know what the bill is, and it's a, it's a, it's a pretty significant bill. But let me ask you this. How many of you know how, why the bill adds up to what it adds up to? Okay, that's your, this is the University of Houston, so you know your stuff. When I ask that question, most people have no idea, have absolutely no idea why our energy bill adds up to what it adds up to. And I think that's pretty remarkable, considering your electric and or gas bill are you know, some of the biggest checks that you write on a monthly basis, beyond... Uh, uh, after perhaps your mortgage. It's the first, second, or third biggest check that people write on a monthly basis. And yet, we don't know why it adds up. Most of us don't know why it adds up to what it adds up to. And for the longest amount of time, we pretty much accepted that as that's just the way it is. Of course, until recently, we introduced competition. Uh, we introduced competition here in Texas and in a handful of states across North America. Texas is unarguably the most competitive market for retail electricity supply, where you as consumers are empowered to choose your electric supplier from dozens of different companies, including my company, Direct Energy. I went on to the Public Utility Commission's website this morning to see um, how many offers were available in my zip code? Uh, and I found no fewer than 49 different companies or brands offering anywhere, offering 253 different options 
253 options that I could choose from, and they're all different flavors of, uh, of term, short term, long term, uh, fixed floating, green, blue, red, pink, energy. And that's great, but that's only half of the story. When I asked how many people know why our bill adds up to what it adds up to, at the, at the most simplest level, it's, it's about price and volume. The rate, how much we pay per kilowatt hour or per therm, multiplied by how much we use, our consumption, how many kilowatt hours and how many therms. And all of the competition that we've seen in our industry is focused on the rate and not the consumption. And for far too long, we've all accepted that there's very little that we can do about our consumption. It's complicated, it's hard to understand, and if you know, we tried to do something about it, it wouldn't make a difference. Well, I believe that it doesn't have to be that way, I believe it doesn't have to be complicated, and I believe that it does make a difference. And the single biggest enabler of that engagement is technology. And so when I talk about technology, you know, what do I mean? I mean hardware and software, uh, engaging, easy to use, that's represented by you know, these smartphones, mobile devices that we all carry around with us. Three years ago, I did not know that I had to have a smartphone or an iPhone, and today I've got two. <laughs> but I didn't know I needed it three years ago. You know, I keep reading, um, you know, everywhere I go, I keep reading that there's going to be more and more mobile connected devices. Today, supposedly, the number gets higher every time I look at it, Today, there are supposedly more mobile connected devices than there are human beings in the planet. Well, there's six or seven billion people in the world today. And supposedly, in two years' time, and this number gets higher every time I hear it, in two years' time, there will be more than uh, 10 billion uh, mobile connected devices, which is a staggering number of devices. The reality is every single aspect of our lives has been transformed through mobile technology. We do things differently. It is possible today, uh, this does not happen in my home, but it is possible today where you could go grocery shopping, again, this doesn't happen at my house, while in the toilet. That's how significantly things have changed. And it's, it's pretty remarkable. So consider this. Um, a couple of years ago, we introduced a product at Direct Energy where we uh, send customers a text message. Uh, a text message at the end of every day, and a text message, frankly, isn't uh, all that sophisticated a technology. We send them a text message which tells them how much energy they've used that day. And it's not in kilowatt hours, it's not in therms, it's not in units of energy that nobody really understands. It's in dollars and cents. It was a $4 day, it was a $5 day, it was up to a $7 day, and it was typically between $4 to $7. And we've got about 75,000 customers on that, uh, on that kind of product. And as a result of receiving just that one piece of information, real time, so today, I know what I did today, I have absolutely no idea what I was doing 30 days ago, which is when I, most people, or 45 days ago, when most of us get our bill for electricity or natural gas, just as a result of that one piece of information, real time, we have seen that group of customers lower their own consumption without any other assistance by 18% on average. That, to me, when I understood and internalized that number, was staggering, absolutely staggering. So imagine if you could understand your consumption um, for today and compare it to others. Compare it to yourself. What did you use yesterday? What did you do last week, the month before? And compare it to other people in your neighborhood who might be like you. 
The reality is we do that today. My company and a bunch of other companies provide smart energy reports and analytics today that you can get on email, on your iPhone, on computers, that let you see how much you used versus your peers, which is the essence of social, uh, social media and, and social uh, engagement. How do you compare versus your peers? Well, we already do that today. Imagine if you could not just understand how much uh, you used for in energy for your home, but for every single energy consuming device. And imagine if you could actually control all of those devices. Well, part of that is actually available today. We partnered with uh, Honeywell and Nest Labs uh, that was subsequently bought by Google for over $3 billion, um, where we provide smart thermostats, which uh, comes with your electricity supply, where you are able to install an app on your phone, uh, uh, and you can turn up, turn down, turn off, turn on your air conditioning uh, and your heating from your phone. Some of these devices are smart, where they learn your behavior. They monitor your, your behavior in the home, and when you're not there, they'll turn the air conditioning off uh, or at a different setting when you're not there. And that's pretty cool. Many of you may have these smart uh, thermostats already today. Well, what about other devices in your home? Well, we partnered with a company called uh, SmartThings, uh, and then subsequently it was bought by Samsung for $200 million. And this is a company that deploys uh, very easy, simple to use technology, uh, a wireless hub, and a bunch of sensors and devices that you can attach to pretty much anything and everything in your home. You can ch change out your socket and plug in your appliance into that socket and it goes from being a dumb fridge to a smart fridge. You can open and shut your front door. You can um, turn on and off your lights turn appliances on and off, um, or turn on and off when you come into the room, all through your phone. How many times have you left your house and wondered whether your garage door is still open, or your front door is locked? It's happened to me a, a billion times. And instead of turning right back around and going all the way home, you don't need to do that anymore. You just need to pull over, because you don't use the phone in the car, you pull over, get your phone out, and you can see whether your door is open, whether the, the front door is unlocked, and at the click of a button, you can lock it all. You can have these, setting, these devices set so that they send you alerts as you're driving away from your home that your garage door is still open and swipe, you can close it. It can send you alerts um, when a cabinet door that's got uh, toxic detergent that you don't want your toddlers near uh, when it gets opened, and it can send you an alert that your kids are messing around with stuff that they shouldn't be messing around with. It can send you alerts when doors are open that you didn't expect to be open, like your front door, and you're not there. And that's pretty powerful and pretty engaging technology. I have a vision where you are able to not just control all of these energy consuming, everything in your home, but you also understand how much energy they're using. And then you get an itemized energy bill, just as if you went grocery shopping. So when you go grocery shopping, you buy a bunch of bananas, milk, oranges, uh, detergent, everything else, and it adds up to $100 at the Target store or wherever you go and you know how much you're buying because it's itemized, and that is a normal consumer shopping experience. If you wanted to spend $120, you could. You could buy a bunch more bananas. If you wanted a different type of detergent because it offers a different cleaning quality to another brand, you're empowered to do that. You just pick a different item off the shelf. Why couldn't your energy bill or consumption be the same? Why couldn't you understand that your laundry cost you $4.35 for the week? Uh, you know, watching a series of Breaking Bad was just over two bucks, or almost $20 for the old crappy fridge in the, in the basement or the, or the garage that 
actually there's nothing in it, and it's inefficient, and it costs you more uh, than an equivalent fridge in your, uh, in, your, in, your, in your kitchen. I have a vision where we will get to a bill that uh, is itemized. It shows you how much you're consuming, converts it into dollars and cents, and you get a sense for how much your heating costs you, your water heater, $11 for lighting, for the dryer, the fridge, and on and on, and every single energy-consuming device in your home. And at the click of a button, you, on your phone, or on a computer, or wherever you are, you can see whether that air conditioner is more or less efficient than your peers. At a click of a button, you can have a technician come around and replace an inefficient air conditioner, a direct energy technician, hopefully, an inefficient tech, uh, air conditioner, and you can see how much you'd get uh, in terms of payback because it's more efficient, uses less energy, and you can finance it monthly. At the click of a button, because you've installed all of this tech, not easy to install technology in your home, you can turn every single one of these things up or down or on or off. Now, now you do know what your energy bill comes to. You know not just what it comes to, you know why it adds up to what it adds up to, and you are empowered to do something about it, just as you are for everything else you spend money on. That is a pretty far cry from where we are today, uh, but it's actually not that far from where we uh, could be tomorrow. My company is working on this and all of these technologies with other companies and other partnerships today. Deregulation of the energy industry was meant to bring competition. Competition was meant to drive efficiency and innovation. And I do believe in the last 15 years we have seen efficiency. And you can choose from 249 different rates. And that's great. But the innovation that I think the deregulation of this industry was expected to bring, I believe is still emerging. And I think the single biggest enabler of that engagement is technology, the technology that I've talked about today. We have a vision uh, at Direct Energy of making a difference uh, in people's lives. And that actually wasn't always our vision. As a company, we've been around for 15 years, so we're a relatively young company, and uh, we're an industry that's also relatively young. And I can remember uh, you know, a decade ago, a number of us would sit around the table and we would you know, ask ourselves, well, you know, what, what do we want to be when we grow up as a company? So for those of you that are aspiring entrepreneurs, this, is a pretty, this was an important lesson for me and hopefully one uh, that you might take away. We would set targets, metrics and targets that defined you know, how many people we'd have, uh, how much stuff we'd sell, how much money we would make. Uh, and all of that was actually quite meaningful for our shareholders. But when it came to whether it was meaningful for our employees, the 6,000 people that we have today, none of that stuff really mattered. People consistently told us that they wanted to work for somewhere that was doing good, had meaning beyond how much money we made or how much stuff we sold. And so about four or five years ago, we had a whole lot of soul searching as a, as a management team around, well, what, what is it that we do? What's our role in life? What is our meaning? Uh, and I remember a conversation uh, I had at home uh, that, that brought all of this uh, to life uh, for me in a really pretty compelling way. And I'll share that story with you uh, briefly. So my brother uh, and his family were visiting from, uh, from England, from, from London. And we were all having dinner one night, uh, and he has three kids. Uh, we were all having dinner about the same age as my, uh, my, my kids. And we were having the what do you want to do when you grow up conversation. Uh, so I asked my oldest nephew, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he said, well, I want to be, be a fireman. I said, great, firemen do great things. And I want to be a pilot. I thought, that's cool. You can do two jobs. There's nothing wrong with that. And then I asked my niece, the second one, what do you want to be 
when you grow up? And she said, well, I want to be an author, a writer, because she, and she loves books, and a pilot. <laughs> it's cool. You can have two kids doing two jobs. So then I asked my, the youngest one, my, nep my, my other nephew, what do you want to be when you grow up? And he said, well, and he's a space cadet, well, I want to be an astronaut. I thought, that's great. That fits his personality. And a pilot. <laughs> so my brother, their father, is a pilot. And it was crystal clear to me how proud my nephews and niece were of their father, that they wanted to do what he does. So my, five, my older daughter, who was five at the time, she was sitting right beside me, watching the whole conversation. And she said, Daddy, what do you do? <laughs> I work for an energy company, and we sell stuff, and we make money. And it brought home to me in a, as powerful a way as, as, it, as I could imagine that we need to stand for something beyond just selling stuff uh, and making money. And so we you know, developed this vision. And for the last five years, we have been searching for ways that we could provide something of value to people. And uh, I believe we, you know, with technology, we are finding it today. Um, have, you, have you seen, are you, have you, anyone seen the movie Field of Dreams? Anyone? A bunch, a few hands, okay. Maybe more of you than you prepared to admit. So Kevin Costner uh, in this movie was set with a challenge. You know, should he build, the challenge was to build a, a, a baseball stadium in a, in a cornfield in the middle of Ohio where there's nothing, there was nothing going on. And the challenge was, if you build it, people will come. And I believe that's, I believe that direct energy has a vision that is meaningful. And we are putting in place the building blocks to deliver that vision. Um, and I hear people say, to, people say to me all the time, you will never get people to engage on their consumption in the way that you're talking about because it's too hard, it's too complicated, and it's not valuable. And I disagree. You know, I didn't know I needed a smartphone three years ago, and I've got two of them, as I said before. I think when people realize how technology is making all of this significantly easier and engaging, where it saves you money, uh, and it makes your home or your business more convenient, I think there will be tremendous demand. Uh, and I'm pretty excited by it. And over the last 12 months, we have been putting in place the building blocks to deliver this vision. We have either acquired or partnered with a bunch of different organizations to put some of these things in place. I talked about our partnerships with Honeywell and SmartThings and Nest, but um, a company called Panoramic Power makes wireless um, uh, devices that you can stick in, this, in circuits throughout buildings, uh, so you know, large manufacturing plant or any kind of large commercial building, where you end up as a building owner getting a whole bunch of text uh, and analytics on your phone that tells you what the consumption is throughout your manufacturing premise. And that's pretty valuable for building owners. When stuff's going on or off, if something's turned off, when you didn't expect it to, you, knew that you now know you've got a problem with some of your manufacturing facility. And you can do it at no cost. Um, companies like XNG and ANG, these are natural gas company or companies in the natural gas space where we are, we are partnering with them to bring cheap natural gas as a replacement for oil uh, or for customers that are not connected to the transportation network and they end up getting gas as opposed to uh, to oil, or fleet CNG, where we help customers to convert their uh, fleet from oil to natural gas, which is cheaper. Uh, or companies like Astrum Solar that we acquired, where we are uh, installing solar on rooftops at the residential level for homes, and the, um, uh, we're financing it 
for our providing it through on a financing basis for our customers where the cost of not only are you avoiding paying the electricity from the grid, but the cost of installing the solar rooftop panel is nothing up front because it's all financed and the monthly cost to you is lower than what your cost of energy would otherwise have been. We partner with companies like Solar City, um, who you may know is founded by the cousin of Elon Musk at Tesla, who are deploying solar panels for buildings across commercial premises across the country and are developing storage technology that allows our customers to not only generate their own electricity, but also store it and shift their peak consumption from the most expensive time of the day to a different time of the day. Eliminating the need for, if, if it's done at scale, billions and billions of dollars of infrastructure spend that we're currently projected to, to do across the country. I think that's pretty exciting. You know, and we are going on tour. Um, we uh, began a tour in September this year uh, through this big orange truck. Uh, we had our first stop actually here in Houston, first public stop, was actually on this campus at the University of Houston. Uh, and we've been stopping at various uh, capital cities in different states throughout the Northeast, showing policymakers, politicians, regulators, entrepreneurs, uh, community members, the power and the ease of some of this technology that allows you in homes and businesses to not only uh, control your home and your business easier, but also have a, a cheaper existence. And what is the truck? Well, it's an 18-wheeler uh, that literally transforms, uh, not into an alien that's going to shoot you or save you, but transforms when it's parked into a mobile home exhibit where we're showcasing all of the technology that I've talked about and then some from you know, smart water heaters, smart sprinklers, smart lights, smart appliances, smart thermostats that show people how easy it is to actually make this, to engage with some of this technology. That it's not only for the technophiles, it's for the technophobes as well, uh, like frankly I was uh, and maybe still am. <clears throat> You know, bottom line is we, we have a vision where we want to fundamentally transform the way people engage with and use energy. And I actually believe that's pretty revolutionary. Uh, and I believe it will be achieved through technology in ways that we have yet to imagine uh, in our industry. And the question I ask my, my people at my company is, are you, are you with me on this journey? So I'll leave you with that question, and thank you for listening, and I think we've got time for questions. Yes. How easy accessible is what technology? It's very accessible. You can buy the Nest thermostat through us, or you can buy it through uh, at a Home Depot or a Lowe's store. It's um, two thirds of people that buy them self install. Um, and if you can't install, you can call us and we'll install it for you. Um, but it's pretty powerful. Why you would want it is because Nest claim, and we haven't yet seen all the data uh, from our customers, that people who install these thermostats are lowering their own consumption by, by almost 20%. So if you consider what your electric bill is, well, most people, you know, $100 a month is not what most people pay. Here in Texas, we, our electric bill, for mo the vast majority of people, is a lot more than $100 a month. And in the summer months, it's an order of magnitude higher than $100. And if you could save 20% on that bill, that's a pretty compelling proposition. And you can get it from us for free. So when you're doing business to business, and whenever you guys are selling these parts, how does the sales rep usually want to eat? Because, I mean, most of the people, they are not educated about how the next work and why they want it. So how are you guys attacking that campaign to sell? Well, we've got a truck. So the question was, for those that couldn't hear, the question was, for those that couldn't hear, well, we've got a truck. So the question was, for those that couldn't hear, why... Um, why have we, why would people want to buy this technology? 
And the answer is, and, and what are we doing to educate people? Well, the answer is, it's, it's a compelling proposition. It saves you money. And all of this technology that allows you to open and shut doors and appliances, turn things on and off, makes your running, your, you know, living in your home and your business easier. Our challenge is to get people to see that and to believe that it's something that they need in the same way that I didn't know I needed my iPhone and now I, I cannot go anywhere without it. And I think that's, that is our challenge as a company. Uh, we're trying to communicate that message through traditional marketing means, you know, a truck that you can see there. Other questions? Yes. Well, you can't get the smart thermostat for um, for that rate, but you know the, the the issue is that you could go you go to text the Public Utility Commission's website and you'll see forty nine different brands offering you two hundred and fifty three different offers, at least in my zip code today. And uh, the reality is, all of these prices are they're they're for a particular term, whether it's six months, one month, twelve months. And at the end of that period, the price is going to be different. A lot of companies have introductory rates and then a different rate once you signed up after that introductory period. And I, I believe you know, a lot of companies will, will offer one rate today and then a different rate tomorrow. And as long as you're not noticing, you know, they're fine and maybe you're not. The challenge, I think, in our business is we need to move the conversation away from the rate to something else that we can do. And I believe that's around lowering your consumption. And I believe that that is worth not just significant dollars for, for, for us, for all of us paying our energy bill, but I think doing it smartly eliminates the need for significant investments in infrastructure that we otherwise would have done, whether it's in transmission and distribution infrastructure or whether it's in generation capacity. Yes. Yep, we've got about Astrum Solar is um, our, it's a solar installation company that we acquired in uh, the summer. It's, you know, too early. It's, it's doing, we're doing business in about 14 states across the Northeast and California and the West, but not in Texas uh, today, not yet. Uh, I will be the first to install it on my roof uh, when we're here in Texas. We're just not here yet. And there's tremendous demand. I mean, the proposition is install solar on your roof and you get to avoid paying uh, the portion of energy that comes from the sun that costs you nothing, and also the monthly cost of the solar installation, which is nothing up front because it's all financed, is lower than what your electric bill would otherwise have been. I think that's a pretty, pretty compelling value proposition. No upfront costs and a lower electric bill. It's a great question. So the question is, why are people upset about um, uh, some customers installing solar on their roofs? Um, uh, why are some energy companies upset? Well, when you install solar on your, on your roof, you no longer are getting uh, the portion of energy that's generated from the solar panels. You no longer need it from central station power. And the reality is regulated utilities recover their investments through a volumetric charge, so price times volume. The less volume you're using, the less volume times price you're paying to the regular distribution utilities to recover their investments, and that's the issue. Yes? Definitely. So the question uh, was, what are we doing on demand response? Well, a lot of the technology that you saw 
that I showed today is demand response. It is empowering our customers, people living in homes and businesses, to use less energy. And that is, that is, that is demand response. But in addition, we've partnered with Solar City, um, who have a semi-relationship with Tesla, where, um, in fact, we announced a, a custom BJ's wholesale, a couple of BJ's wholesale stores in the Northeast, where we're installing the solar on the roof together with a 200 kilowatt uh, battery, which allows those customers to store the energy that comes through the day, and when the sun goes down, they're still using that energy to shift uh, the uh, load from the peak that otherwise they would have consumed. And I think that's pretty, I think solar plus storage is likely to be a, um, you know, uh, economically uh, sort of game-changing combination of technologies if deployed at, a, at scale, which comes down to the question around will customers engage? And I believe when customers see the, the value for them, they will engage. Other questions? Yes. So say the question again. How are we? Yeah. yeah. It's a great question. So you know, one of the one of the questions that uh, that I get asked about all the time uh, when I talk about these kinds of technologies are how do you ensure that um, with all of these devices that are wireless and connected to every single appliance in your home, how do you ensure that you're not compromising either your own, my company's, uh, cyber uh, security, or introducing vulnerabilities to customers' cybersecurity? And it's a great question. You know, I think um, the, the technology companies in the Valley, uh, in, in Silicon Valley, um, are, are very focused on the question of cybersecurity, when everything is wireless in your home and connected to every single device, and data privacy, making sure that the data that, that, that is available um, from all of these devices is not used in a way that is um, not aligned with customers. And I think the, the starting point for all of it is nobody gets to use the data unless it's with the customer's permission. And that's, that's the issue on privacy. I think for cybersecurity, uh, you know, I think there's more, more to be done, quite honestly. Yes? Well, well, very useful. I think if you can get, um, uh, the, you know, if you can uh, generate your own power, from the solar, from say a solar cell uh, on the roof, and then store it, and then not have to use central station power from at the peak hour of the day because you're taking it from the battery. You could materially shift the peak consumption, and the generation the generation capacity in the United States and everywhere around the world is built to serve the peak. We build power stations in you know everywhere in the world to serve the peak. When everyone's using electricity at the same time, you know, when you get up in the morning for breakfast and when you're coming home from work. And if you can shift that consumption because you're not relying on central station power, but you're getting it from your own storage device, it has dramatic implications on uh, investment uh, in the infrastructure in the United States. Other questions? Yeah. We, you know, years ago we did. Um, we signed a bunch of uh, long-term contracts with uh, wind developers here in Texas, and which enabled, um, actually, which enabled about 10% of the gen wind generation to be built actually here in Texas. And we offered customers uh, wind energy. Uh, it's intermittent, so it's not always wind. Uh, the reality is there wasn't enough demand. You know, people said in market research that they wanted it, but at the end of the day, there wasn't as much demand at the end of the day. Because it costs more. Because it costs more. Yes? I'm not familiar with direct energy, but a lot of energy providers charge a higher rate when you go under 2,000 kilowatts and a lower rate over. So direct energy is pushing lower consumption. If I went lower than 2,000 just to get a higher rate, that's my incentive to do lower consumption. 
your incentive is lower volume, price times volume. If you lower the volume, your bill is going to be lower. And we're, so it's a great question. I mean, we, we're in markets in 100 different utility territories across the United States, so the pricing is different everywhere. Um, but I think fundamentally, the, the untapped opportunity in North America is helping people lower their consumption. And that's what we're trying to bring through this technology. And people say to me, well, why are you, as an energy company, wanting to sell less electrons and molecules? Why are you wanting to sell less, less energy? Aren't you going to make less revenue? Yes, we will make less revenue as a company on the sale of, of energy. But our business model isn't about selling energy. Our business model is about providing value to customers and having customers stay with us longer. So it costs us a lot of money to attract customers to us. If they don't then churn away, we get to not have to spend that money. And that's why it's attractive for us. Yes? So it's a great vision. But you don't believe people will engage. <laughs> people stay with us longer. It's as simple as that. As simple as that. Now, not everyone's going to want to, as a, as for my company, not everyone's going to want to self-install all of this technology. So we happen to have the largest technician workforce in the country who can help uh, do that for you uh, for a fee. Uh, so we, we expect there to be revenue models that we'll be developing that allows us to continue to make money, as well as having customers stay with us longer and not having to reacquire customers when they churn away. I get asked that question all the time. Say again? Oh, forget about that. <laughs> yes? It's a great question. Um, uh, so for those who didn't hear it, it's what kind of company are we? Are we an energy retailer or something else? Well, you know, we are, you know, 90% of our business is the sale of electrons and molecules today. But I, I believe that, you know, five years from now, you know, something significantly less than 90% of our business will be from selling energy. And instead, it'll be through providing technology and services to customers. And that we will generate revenue from that, and we will provide a proposition for customers that's compelling and takes the business on from being commodity only, but a proposition that allow that actually people get to save money themselves. Yes? So it so the question was how long does it take for people to recover the cost of the installation? Um, so we, you know, we install uh, solar at the residential level um, throughout the Northeast uh, and in the West, and it varies in different states. It depends upon what the price of electricity would have otherwise been. It depends on how much the sun shines in any particular state, whether there's trees covering you know, the, you know, where the sun's shining on your home. So there's a whole bunch of different factors, but it's measured in years. It's typically measured in years but there are no upfront costs. So if you finance it, you don't pay anything upfront, and uh, your bill on a monthly basis with the financing charge is less than what your electric bill otherwise would have been. Uh, so the question is, what's the life expectancy of the residential solar uh, uh, installation you know, over 20 years? Other questions, yes? Or 
Yeah, so the question is, what is, what is my company choosing to invest in? Um, well, I had a slide earlier that shows some of the investments that we've been making uh, over the last, um, you know, last uh, 12 months. And it's, it's companies that are deploying technology or services that take the, the sale of energy beyond a commodity. So, uh, you know, it's any one of these companies which are, you know, solar companies, bounce energy, was a, was a retail energy company that had invested significantly in digital. People that understood the digital marketplace and were, were developing digital channels to market. We're investing in data. We're investing in the um, uh, capability to take large quantities of data and understand what does it all mean so that we can provide it back to our customers in ways that are uh, user friendly and engaging. We are. So we partnered with you know, company Siemens, who are developing demand response technology that are, that's likely to be similar to the, what you're talking about with Enernoc. But frankly, we are talking to dozens of companies that are deploying or developing technologies that haven't yet made it to market. And companies are interested in talking to us. And the reason we're on the road uh, is to, to send the word out that we're willing to talk to people who are developing technologies because we serve millions of customers. And we've got a base of customers that uh, any one of these companies might be interested in deploying their technologies towards. Other questions? Yes. So the question was, is Centrica, the parent company in the UK, doing uh, the same thing? You know, largely, um, you know, the answer is yes. You know, we're trying to find ways where we can change the relationship with our customers from providing electricity and natural gas to providing a service that helps them take control of their bill in a way that most people didn't think possible. One more question. I think we've got a question right here. We can see. Yeah, it's a great. It's a great point. Great comment. Um, the comment is around uh, this vision promotes sustainability. It does promote sustainability and conservation. You know, what we have found is when we put that to our customers, in actually, believe it or not, almost every demographic, slightly less so for younger generation, but when we put that out as a value proposition, we actually don't get people. We don't get uh, at, at scale saying, yes, I want some of that. But when we say we can help you save money, every segment of customers, every demographic, uh, every, every age group will say, yes, I would like some of that. And it turns out to be sustainable and uh, friendly towards the environment. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.